Hello, everybody. It is so good to see you and share your screen with your, whoops, it disappeared. Oh, well, I guess I didn't need to, some little message popped up and I thought, oh, what's that about? But anyway, hello, everyone. It is so good to see you. And Marsha, I sent you an email, but I think I had your old email address. So I'm going to have to make sure to get your new email so I can keep in contact with you. But I'm here and I'm tired. I put in a hard day in this studio to get this place cleaned up. I have been working since before noon, since this late this morning on this room. And I'm very, very glad. And I still have a, a good ways to go. But there used to be a table right there, a folding table with fabric. And I had fabric everywhere. And so today, I'm proud to say I got all my fabric put away. This includes new fabric that I had to roll on the paper bolts. Do I ever rest? Well, actually, I, whoops, let me make sure to turn it off. Actually, I do rest. I'm hoping you can hear me. So I just unplugged a speaker and I didn't want it to get in your way. But yes, I do rest because I woke up Monday. Oh, thank you. I woke up Monday and I had hit a wall where I had just been pushing since before Christmas and then going as much as I love Myrtle Beach Quilt Party. It's Christmas and then the quilt party and then working on the Alaska quilt that I think is looking pretty good. Hi, Becca. Yeah, Becky, Becca Bradley, I think I have said hi to her before. And I love her name. So when Mark got home from work, I said, I'm really depressed. And I had just, whew, I was done. <laughs> so I just did a couple things. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I did what I felt up to. And every day I started feeling better. So yes, I do get tired. And um it's, it's a lot. You, I'm sure you all understand that. Once you get in your late 60s, things slow down and you just don't. When I was younger, I could work really hard and then get a good night's sleep and then feel great. Now it lasts a lot longer. So I, uh, Mark was really good because when he came home, I said, I think I've hit a wall. I am just, it's, hard to even move. And uh, so anyway, but I'm much better. And today when, okay, when I get fabric, oh, I had a board, you know, I have those comic boards. Here's one. I love these comic boards. Now you might say comic boards. They were invented for people who like to save comic books archivally. So the boards don't have any assets in them that could damage comics or fabric, but they're the perfect size for the little basket. See that basket? I get that from the dollar store. And they're the perfect size that when I wrap the fabric on it, they fit upright in that basket. Just like, do you see these on this end? So they fit in there, and that way, my closet, I'll take a picture and show you my fabric closet. I can now show you my fabric closet. In fact, whew, it is such a big job that I asked Mark, could you come and help me move the baskets out? Then I would organize the baskets and put the fabrics that I refolded back in the basket. He'd put it back up on the shelf, get me a new basket. Because between my arthritis and my back, it was like, this is killing me. And I was really hoping <laughs> that I would have more fabric in my closet. I mean, more space. Okay. Because I've been trying not to buy fabric. 
Been trying to use up my fabrics. Mark said, you've got more. <laughs> and I'm afraid he might be right. I thought I'd been using up fabric. But <clears throat> I've got to work a little harder. <laughs> so anyway, but I got, what I do is I use these comic boards. And I take new fabric. And I have the fold and then the selvage. So it's folded just like it came off the bolt. But then I fold it one more time. Then it's the perfect size to roll up on here. So what I do is I iron it nice and flat. And every time I roll, do a roll, turn this and roll it, I iron again. The flatter I can get the fabric, the more of these mini bolts I can put in a basket. And that's important <laughs> so, <laughs> because it would be nice to just have one basket for a particular color. But some of mine, I have two, and then some of them have fabric kind of laying on top of the basket. But anyway, when I get going so fast, which is I've been really busy producing and producing, the fabric may end up on the roll, maybe off the roll. Um, some fabrics are just thrown in a pile. Everything need to be ironed. Then I have fabric that's just not enough yardage to devote to a mini bolt. So what I do with that is I fold it. What is her style? You know that want that neat woman who does all the organizing? Well, I use I, I listened to enough of her things that I went to the dollar store and got silverware trays and fold the fabric to fit neatly in those. So these are the are the pieces that aren't even a half yard that then I fold and put light colors together. And it's really good. So I took out all of those trays. I re-ironed and folded to make sure everything stayed perfectly neat because I want to get as many in there as possible. So I got all of that done. And oh, I have been throwing stuff away. I have been cleaning up stuff. So now that the fabric is put away, I'm going to go surface to surface clean off the surface. Everything has to have a place and a purpose. If not, it's going to go in the trash can because I just can't keep any more stuff. I have got to get this area cleaned up. I am noticing that if it's too messy, I just feel overwhelmed. But it's been a, now things are going good. I am 100% back. I had promised y'all I was going to have a lot more of the drawing done on this house, but I apologize. I know now that when I hit that wall, that's it. I mean, you know, when you don't even want to get out of bed, when you don't want, you don't eat or drink all day long. Not a good thing. So I've been taking good care of myself and watching good shows and doing hand projects that make me feel good. Maybe paper beads, maybe work. I turned the block around on the Alaska quilt. So there. And I'm hoping too that you understand. Ah, uh, um, good, Jody. Good, Jody. I hope you understand too that we all have times we get a little blue. I'm no different. I am lucky to have y'all. Doing this show twice a week keeps me more focused. And when I get off from doing the show, I feel so good. Having y'all to talk back and forth with, having this virtual community is perfect for me. I get overwhelmed sometimes with people face to face, but I love having this virtual community. So it's a wonderful thing. Thank you for being so patient with me. I will always do the best I can for you, but never worry. Never worry that, uh-oh, what's going to happen if she pushes too hard? I'm learning to listen to my body more because with age comes wisdom and an appreciation of just being too tired. So anyway, but this Wednesday, I listened to my textile talks. If any of you don't know about textile talks, they're sponsored by a lot of groups, but I think Sakwa 
S A Q A, which is, uh oh, wait a minute. I know this. I know this. If someone can, you are depressed. Yes, yes. And you know what? The thing we have to do too is talk about our depression because it, there's an old saying that I love. And that is, monsters live in the dark. Meaning, if we keep things too quiet, if we don't share with someone, that monster gets bigger. Do you remember that the dragon that kept getting bigger as everyone ignored it until it was out of the house? That's the thing. If you share how you feel. And, you know, Mark was just a little softer and gentler to me and all but mainly he just, just being able to tell him really helped. So never feel ashamed if you have this problem and please reach out, reach out to someone and, uh, you know, reach out to a crisis center if you need to. These things, you know, life can be difficult, but it's also so wonderful and you don't want to miss life. Something came in the mail Wednesday. That's it. Studio and Art Quilt Associates. Thank you, Miss Lisa. Oh, my God. She's so smart. Oh, and look at Laura. She knew, too. I love Sakwa. They are amazing. And they are some really innovative art quilters who've gotten together. And they do amazing things. Laura's. You're in it. Yay. I've made a donation, but I haven't joined yet. That's like a little, you know, a little scary, but oh, it's wonderful. And um, I can't, I, um, I love those textile talks. Oh, and another thing, Mancuso is doing another um, virtual schoolhouse. This one is in March. I can do it March 20th, I think, through 23rd, 25th, something like that. But it's in that week of March, and I'm going to do it. I've already got two classes picked out, and I have to decide, do I do both? Do I just pick one? But Mancuso, I love supporting them. Oh, there you go. You clean. Uh, isn't it amazing when you go to clean a shelf or drawer and you go, what in the world? It feels great to throw stuff away. So that's my that's my new focus, getting UFOs done, getting this house, continuing to clean stuff out. And every garbage bag is a win. So I'm loving it. But um, I, I love Sakwa and the Textile Talks and Mancuso having their eighth virtual schoolhouse. They started these during the pandemic, and I love them for it. I still love them now because as I get older, it's harder to travel. And I can stay home and learn from a professional teacher, learn a new skill or perfect one that I like and want to get better at. So Mancuso, it's in March please consider it. They've even got a lecture. If you don't want to pay registration, you can just pay to hear the lecture. And every time I take a class, and I do all classes virtually now, except for Myrtle Beach Quilt Party, but every time I can listen to textile talks or take a class, I learn. And it it just makes me feel good. If I'm having a little bit of a tough week, it lifts my soul. So I highly recommend it. And uh, I want I want to support them because this is wonderful. When you stop and think of how much that you would have to pay to go to a quilt show and to take a class, the hotel, the travel, all of that, these are a bargain. And if you can afford it, it's a nice way to take care of yourself. So now Wednesday, something came in. And if I needed a pick-me-up, this is it. And I don't recommend therapeutic shopping unless you can. You know, bills have to come first. But this came in the mail. And I found out that Miss Jacqueline de Jong, and I know I'm probably pronouncing her name wrong, is from Denmark. And um, but this kit came in 
the mail. And it is such a good deal. I tell you, I think I told you I got it for $134.25. And I have seen them priced up to $275. So I was really pleased with it. Sunday, I'll, I'll show you the actual kit and explain. If kits, if fabric and kits cost more, then why can it be a good deal to buy a kit? Because there is a reason it can be. I'm not saying everyone, but I'm going to show you why I knew get this kit. Don't just buy the pattern. And you know, I'm frugal. I'm as cheap as they come, but I'll show you the kit for that. So yay. I even told myself the other day, I said, if you can just get up and get some things done, you could start a new quilt. That wasn't even enough to get me moving. But I just wanted to show you this kit came with a whole mess of templates. And the templates were printed on newsprint. And I don't know about you, but I'm very careful. If, if a pattern has templates, I don't want to cut them out of tissue paper, mess them up, and then I don't have them anymore. So I was like, what can I do? Because they're all... Look at all these different size templates. Some, the smallest, are these little flower leaves. So let me tell you what I did. I was sitting there feeling, you know, still feeling a little down with no energy. But I just took that tissue paper. And when I say tissue paper, it's um newsprint. Newsprint, but it's still very thin and easily torn. Here's one of the original type pieces. And they all came printed out on a great big sheet. I said, I don't, I could go to a copy store and have that great big sheet printed because if I, I've bought it, I would show them I bought it and tell them it's just for my use, just so I can have a usable copy. But I didn't feel like doing anything like that. So what I did is I cut them all out. And then I thought, what can I do to make them hold up? And also to make them a little easier to trace. Now, I, it's a lot of pattern pieces. I mean, the piece of paper they came on was big. And so I didn't want to use up my stash of... Um, what is it called? Like the Mylar, you know, to make... Um, to make a copy. And so what I did is I cut them out very closely, then spaced them on cardstock and put them as closely as I could on cardstock to make good use of it. I think it took me like five and a half pieces of cardstock. Put them on, glued them down on cardstock. Okay. Then I took my triple thick acrylic sealer and a sponge brush, and I sponged them. And I'll show you how you can tell. See the shine? But I just painted one layer of the triple thick acrylic, and now they are water resistant and they're on cardstock. Now you could say, well, why didn't I just trace them on cardstock? Because I didn't want to have to write all of these in instructions between the little stars and the numbers and the straight grain and what part. And no way. So I just glued them on there. So now I know that when I make this pattern, if I want to make another one, which I probably won't, but I will definitely have pattern pieces. So anyway, I just thought I would show you. I've never done that before with one, but I thought that was a pretty cool idea. And it didn't cost me any new money because I had the triple, the triple thick acrylic sealer. I got the foam brush for Christmas and I had the cardstock and the Elmer's glue. So, da -da. but anyway, I thought that was kind of cool. I want to see who is here. Art by Nancy Lynn. Ah, is this our Nancy Lynn? I bet you it is. Okay, here we go. Laura R. Oh, so good to see you. And Marsha, I need your new email. Don't put it on here. Just send me an email and that way I'll get it. Because I sent you Mary. 
our monkey Mary had said, how's Marsha? I'm worried about her. So I wrote and said, I'm, I'm trying to check and make sure you're okay. All right. There's Debbie. Yay. Oh, thank you. It was so nice. I was trying to get ready and I saw her Debbie say, nice to have Thursday art quilt show. That is so nice. So, oh, Lisa, love our Lisa. Denise Weeks. Hey. Oh, I love how Denise, that's a really cool abbreviation of our time to quilt Thursday. That's really nice. Y'all are so special. So special. I'm sorry, Melanie's team, Detroit lost in the playoffs. But um, but Taylor's happy. <laughs> I think she's so cute. And I'm glad she was a band girl. And we love uh, us band kids. We stick together. But, uh, uh, and Marsha, Marsha is so proud of her homeland of Scotland, of her state, Nebraska. I love seeing that. So anyway, Kathy Klein, how good to see her. And Becca Bradley. Oh, this is wonderful. You know, I would, Mark thinks that I have an extraordinary amount of stash. And I try telling him, oh, hon, I don't have any of the stash that so many people I've seen. So I'm going to take pictures of my stash closet to show you. And y'all can, you know, y'all can give me your honest opinion if you think I'm out of control or is that just what you would expect me to have? So, <laughs> oh gosh, this is great. Ah, oh, this is great. Oh, Jody does love scraps. In fact, Marsha, I was supposed to get you some information. But anybody have scraps they want to give away? Not let me know because Jody loves scraps. And I sent her a bag of scraps, which I kind of considered trash. She then took a picture of what she did with the scraps. They were beautiful. <laughs> so my email is our time to quilt at twc.com. And it, you can let me know you want to join our groups IO or if you want to share photos with me of your work that I can show during our Sunday show and tell. Or if you want to give scraps to Miss Jody because she loves, she truly loves scraps. So let's see. Yeah, we're thinking of Jody. We're wanting the most perfect job to come her way. So think good thoughts for her because I think it helps. So, oh, Polly, hello. Oh, I used to always, Polly said winter is a tough time for the blahs. Oh, February used to be hard for me. Now that I get to quilt so much, it's now one of my favorite months because it's too cold to go work out in the yard. So, my glasses are a little crooked. I'm trying to get them straight. Like, oh, God. You know, I was, hi, Cheryl Hogan. I was so tired. My back is killing me. I was so tired after working in this room. And I thought, oh, for a, for, for a plug nickel, I just would go sit on the couch. I went, no, you're going to do that show. Then I saw Debbie's comment, and I thought, that's why you do this, girlfriend. And now that I'm here, I'm so glad. So elevate your frequency. Oh, oh, okay. I'm glad you can relate. Yep, Jody. And you know what? The things that we love the most can help bring us out of the funk. And we all get it. It's just, oh. But anyway, yeah, I'm, you know what, Becca, I think I'm going to try to aim on even days that I'm not cleaning to find one thing to clean. Then, you know, I don't have to go in like today to get myself to come down here. I said, just go clean for an hour. And seven hours later, I was still down here. But the thing is, is sometimes I just have to say, just do one thing. Oh, Jody, that's wonderful. Playing a bass guitar. Oh, I love that. A few years ago, I got a, it is a wooden instrument 
music teachers used to use it in, in elementary school, but you strum it and now auto harp, an auto harp harp. And the reason I got one, I saw it on eBay. My godmother, who I love so much, she was the mother I always wanted. She used to play one. And when I saw this used auto harp, I bought it. I said, I want that for Christmas. But I haven't gotten the strings on it. I think I'm going to make sure to order those strings so I can start learning how to play. That's so cool. And Marsha, you're going to play acoustic guitar. That's wonderful. So let's see. Um, what is what a paper piece quilt? Is it the Alaska? Alaska is not paper piece, but it is template. And, uh, so if anybody wants to learn or to do the Alaska quilt, um, I could sell you cheaply my templates that I bought. But let's see. Oh, I'm so glad you made a live Nancy Lynn. And Charlene Piper is here. Oh, Lisa got in her something blue pattern. Oh, oh, Lisa, I want you to send me some pictures of your Alaska quilt and send me a picture of that pattern because I want to show everybody, okay? Because everybody wanted to know about that something blue. Is it something blue? Where is Lisa's post again? Yep, something blue. Oh, all right. Was there something else somebody was saying? I, I want to make, we should put a band together. Oh God, I got to tell you this. So for Christmas, one of my little Christmas treats was I, I played clarinet for seven years. I thought, I want to learn to play clarinet again. Just pick it up. I can still do the chromatic scale, but that's about it. So I thought I was buying a pack online, a pack of assorted reed sizes. No, they all came in and they're two and a halves. I can't, that's the, that's the strength of reed I used to play, but it's that's been 40 years. <laughs> so, oh gosh, this is so neat. I love talking to y'all. This is so much fun. Oh gosh, I, I, I laugh so good. Ah, Polly's telling on me. She said she's seen my stash and it's a lot. <laughs> okay, I'll have to tell Mark. One of them voted on your side. <laughs> so, oh, Becca, my email address. I'm going to do it one more time. Our, whoops, time to quilt at twc.com. All right. So that is great. Um, let me see. The vibrations from instruments are healing. I bet you any. Oh, Jody, do you think you could ever talk him into playing something a little bit so we could see? I know Terry's going to say, don't let her get you in trouble. <laughs> but we would love to hear that. Kathy Klein plays snare drums. That's fantastic. You know, my son's a drummer. And he just ended up buying a snare drum. He said he had been wanting one for the longest time. And uh, when he was in high school, he played quints. And that's five drums. And so he played them. The, you march with them all in front of, you know, a, a holder. And they're lined up in front of you. But he always wanted to play snare. So now he... He said he's been saving up money from all of our birthday and Christmas gifts we gave him, and he got himself a snare drum. So isn't that fun? Polly can play the kazoo. We all need a kazoo. Yes, that is great. So we'll have a band. Uh, you're all collectors. Yeah, we are all collectors, aren't we? That, I think, is one of the things I love the most because we have so much in common. And quilters are the best. Um, our time to quilt at, at TWC.com. And when after this is over, Becca, you'll be able to see it because I make sure that you can always read back through the chat 
And that way, if you can't be here, you don't feel like you've missed everything. Pat, hi, Pat. She played trumpet. And your band wore quilts. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hi, Betty Meisner. It is so good to see you again. Oh, I am loving this. Y'all are the best. Well, even though I didn't get a lot done on this quilt, like I told you, I had planned to. I really had. But at least I had my, oh, and now I'm back. And in fact, it was funny. I'm looking at some of these fabrics today as I'm getting them ready to put away. And I'm like, man, I got some nice stuff here. I can't wait to use it. And uh, in fact, I packed up. I, I've told myself that when I get a little more done of the studio, because I want to have Polly over to sew with one day. And I haven't done that. It's like a whole year and I've been, you know, waiting to clean this room up. But anyway, I told myself if I can get some more cleaning done, that I'd like to take a little bit of time and maybe start working on the blue quilt. So we'll see. Although, although, this Sunday, we're pulling a new number for our UFO. I haven't even touched the quilt I'm supposed to be working on. So maybe today I'll take that upstairs with me and work on that instead tomorrow. But I'm definitely going to get back down here and clean again. I, I was so lucky. I was trying to clean the house and I was, you know, pretty blue. And Mark said, can I, how about if you dust mop and dust and I'll vacuum? <sighs> and you know what? Sometimes having a clean house really feels good. And I made a huge pot of chili last night that we had for dinner. And I put four, five quarts away. So I, I'm loving that now. Because, you know, I could never train myself to cook small, small portions. I was used to cooking for five people. And so now it works out beautifully because we have all kinds of pre- you know, frozen good dinners. So, yay. So, anyway. All right. So, oh, Marsha loves kilts. <laughs> uh, quilts versus kilts. That's cute. Oh, okay, Pat. I thought, Mark, you having a uniform of quilts was unusual. I thought, well, maybe it was a grown group of women. <laughs> Because, you know, hey, I'll, I'll be in a marching band with quilts on now. Kilts. Oh, that's cool, Pat. That is awesome, Pat. It makes a lot more sense, too. <laughs> but if you said it, I was going to believe it because Pat is a lovely woman. And she would never lie to us. <laughs> so it's like what my son told me when he was 11. And I said, Christopher? Do you still believe in Christmas? I mean, Santa? And he said, of course, Mom, because you would never lie to me. Oh, my gosh. Talk about having an instant anxiety attack. I was like, oh, my gosh. And I think later, I think later, I, I think he really knew what was the truth. And that was his little way of kind of teasing me. But it was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, all oh, these kids, what in the world? Oh, the boys didn't know. Oh, they had to wear kilts too. Oh my goodness. And I hope they had a little more under those kilts than a true Scotsman does. Let me tell you. But okay. Here is the house. I was having so much fun. Now we'll get back down to business. I have done some good things. I pulled out a basket and as I, especially as I was going through fabric, pulled out things that I thought would help me on this project. And then when this project is done, I'm going to promise myself to put away the fabric. I'm not going to just throw it 
on a flat surface. Because I have a problem. I have a weakness. Anytime I see a flat surface, I want to put stuff on it. <laughs> so here we go. Let me bring some light over. And so I'm work coming in here. And I'm, oh, I got a ruler because why not make a straight line? So I got a ruler to come help draw the lines because this, we call this Art Quilt Thursday, but it, with this Art Quilt, I want to make sure that I um, do a good job with the architecture part because, you know, if, if things are too crooked and too messed up, then it starts to look like a cartoon. So I'm just kind of coming in here and filling in. And okay. So that's, that's the first thing that I need to do. Now, I'm not going to sit here and do all of this in front of you. although. I know where I have some of some bushes here that kind of, you know. All right. But you see what I'm kind of, what I'm trying to decide. What's really important to put in? What is just too cluttered to worry about? Because you have to put in enough realism for people to be able to say, oh, yeah, that's their house. That looks right. And unless you want to draw a cartoon house, I'm not telling you what to do, but okay. So the bottom of the door is a little bigger, but it, it's nice to be able to use a ruler and make the drawing, the lines easy to do. Okay, let me see. Um, and I keep this drawing here handy. So I can make sure that I know where things are. Okay, let's see. All right. And this porch goes all the way to both of the columns. So, all right. Now, here, and I have a step or two. I have a couple steps. All right. So just go along. And now, I'm making my bushes a little bit prettier than maybe they are right now, especially since it's winter. But I can do this because this is my drawing, and I can certainly do this. But um, but I'm just going to come along here and make sure. Okay, these have this. Okay, these have another line across here. But just go over. Make sure you've got things where you wanted them. Make sure that the roof line is right where you want it to be. Because once you start cutting the fabrics and stuff, it's a little late then to do a lot of changing. And so you just want to make sure that you've got things about right. And I'm using an ink pen. And I'm, I'm going to tell you why that's okay. The reason it's okay is because this, this foundation of this is muslin. This foundation of muslin is going to be completely covered over. Now, I want to put in this tree. Whoops. I want to put in this tree. So I'm going to come here. Okay, so I'm not doing too many trees in front of the house, but then I will add in. I will come along here and and I'll decide which of these trees back behind the house that I want. I might not want them too cluttered. So, you know, I will decide how many because if you can see, this is a very wooded lot. There's lots of trees. Now, this is fig bush. I'm leaving this out because it hides too much of the house. This is a double file viburnum that's away from the house. I'm leaving that out 
because it blocks. Look how between these, they block this whole end of the house. Now, some of the bushes, I might let, I might make them just a little shorter so that more of the house shows. But I am including these two trees. There's a crepe myrtle here. There's a dogwood here. There's, you know, lots of other things over here. And I'm deciding, no, nope, leaving it out, leaving it out. So I'm going to finish doing this. Then what I have to do is pull my pattern down, my paper pattern. And then I have to make sure I draw all of the lines on the paper pattern. That is really important because as you start using, as you start um, putting fabric, gluing fabric down, you're going to cover up the lines on the, you will cover up the lines on the foundation, on the muslin. Well, if you cover up the lines on the muslin, guess what? Then you won't know exactly where to put things. So, okay. So make sure before you do any work with fabric to come in here, pull down the pattern over the drawing below and come in here and make sure you get that pattern transferred to this. Okay. Very, very important. So, you know, I'll just make sure to take time to come along here. Now, next for next week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a lot of this pad, a lot of this pattern, the fabrics cut out. And so when I cut these out, I'm not going to glue them down until I'm with you because I want to show you, you know, I'll I want to show you a few points of that. So let me get this, this line straightened. Okay. But anyway, so now, and I like keeping this, and here's a black and white larger copy. And, and the reason I have this, actually, one, two, three, four different sizes of the house is because it really helps me to see detail. And what do I want to put? Like there's something really pretty that the former neighbor did, the former owner, I mean. She took and made a stone wall right across here. I'm going to want to make sure that I put that in here. And it kind it's in front of this bush that I did have this bush drawn on here. And it's in front of that, so it'll kind of come like this. So I'm going to make sure that I put that stone wall right over here. Okay, now, so, and having all these different sides, I might look at something and go, what is that? And then all I have to do is look at a larger copy, and I'll get a chance to see what that is. So... All right, now what I'd like to show you, and I'm sorry I don't have the fabric, I mean, the any of the fabric ready to glue down. I apologize for that. But I wanted to show you what I chose and why. Because that sometimes can kind of help you in knowing what are you going to do for yours. So let me bring you up here a little bit, turn it down. All right. So here is the photo. So now let me show you. Comes to the greens. My house is a sage green. You can kind of see it right here. So, but look where the sun shines on it. If I want the sun reflected, then I'm going to need a yellow, more yellowy green. Some area of the sun might really shine. So I'm going to get greens of all. These are, I'm not saying I'm going to use all of these. These are possible uses. There are plenty of places where, like right under this trim, that this would be a better description of the sage green. The shadows, look at the shadowing here. 
So I've got greens. They're my shutters. Maybe I'll use this for shutters. And let me round out my greens. Sage with sun on it turns this. Here are some greens for some of the shrubs and the bushes. In fact, I need to get one of my grass greens that Miss Lisa gave me. So I pull out more than I need because you don't know until you are ready just what you are going to want. And here is a dark shadow, dark shadowy green. Oops, let me bring it up a little more. Um, so I think while I was putting away my fabric, which means I can still go in the closet and find others. But look at all the greens I pulled out. Because until I start doing this, I'm not sure. Oh, who's sick? Oh, for your daughter. She's pretty sick. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry about that. We will think good thoughts. So these are my greens. This is a green black. I mean, some of the different colors that you see in here. Look at the plants. They're almost black. Look at this camellia over in the corner. So you get a wide, having this wide range means when I sit down to work on it, I've got tons of ideas. Little things like what kind of clouds, what sky am I going to use? And I pulled out several. Oh, here's another green even, okay? Um, but here, I don't know. I might use a whiter blue. I'm going to wait and see. It looks pretty white back here, but I've got three skies to pick from. More if I need to go grab some. All right. Then I have some white here with a little pattern on it because some places where the white is in shadow, that can get be a good white with a sh in a shadow. And I have my white, I have white fabric here too. Then I got this ombre because it goes from a pure white all the way to a just about pure black. So that's pretty, that's great. Fat ombres are wonderful. So now I need to like right down here, if I'm going to put this strip of grass in, then one of the prints that Lisa gave me is going to be perfect there. So I will get some grass. Most of my yard is has pine needles. We call them pine straw, but pine needles. So what I'm going to do, but another reason I got the greens is I'm going to have leaves on the trees. I would really like the yard to look like that. Now, I've got this pine straw that I've got to deal with, and it takes up a good amount of that front yard. So I said, okay, I think the next colors I need to go with are all the browns. And it mostly, I know it mostly looks like a reddish brown, but there's lots of other think colors in it. And I might not have the exact color. So, oh, this is for my front door. My front door is a nice barn red. So there's that. It's a little bit darker too. I got the little bit darker than barn red because it's in a sh little bit in a shadow and there. Look at this for the pine straw. That's wonderful. Then look at this. That's another good pine straw. So what I did is just started looking. This is good for some areas where the sun is hitting the pine straw. I even pulled this out because some areas might be a little more orangey brown than this and this. And this is another, besides pure white, this is another white that I'll use like for trim. You look, look at this trim right here. It's white in real life, but it looks yellow. Well, there we go. 
Now I've got that trim. So I think I'm going to pick out, try to go through my skies and pick out another sky version. I think I'm going to go through my blacks and try to find a modeled one for the roof. Um, you know what I may do, depending on how, oops, I hope I was showing you what I was saying, but I think I'm going to let check enough, get at least one more sky, a modeled black for the roof line. And I think that, see these cute little flowers on there? I may just, they'd be great to do French knots, wouldn't they? So it depends on how in-depth I want to get with this. But I think I've got a pretty good start on my fabrics because the first things I like to do is block out color. Block it in. Or block in color. So I'm going to want to put the rock wall in. Then I'm going to be want to put some pine straw in. And I'm going to make sure to put some grass, even if I have to act like my yard is a little shorter because I do want to show the grass too. But I'm going to block in the roof, block in this porch, block in some parts of the house, block in pine straw, grass, bush, you know, then I'll check about trees. But so I'm hoping this makes a little sense to you to, so it will help you in gathering your fabrics. Now, remember, you only have to use a tiny little bit of fabric. You don't have you don't have to have yardage. You can bring your scrap bag over because honest to goodness, it won't you won't need for a lot of the things you won't need that much. So I will be going through my landscape fabric too to be able to find those. So I hope. Oh, and barring a hurricane or another hitting the wall, depression, I should have, whoa, and that now I just made you nauseous. I'm so sorry. Okay, so, but barring any unusual event, I should have a lot more done. So, ah, oh, because... I want to start a new project and I've been thinking about quite a few of them. So, Oh goodness gracious. In fact, you know what? I think that the quilt con was in Raleigh, but I didn't go. It was too soon after when Mark retires, it'll be nice to do a little bit more traveling maybe, but I wasn't up to another trip. So we shall see. Any questions that you have from any of this? And I, oh, honey, I, I'll be thinking of your daughter, Mary. I know that bothers you that you can't be there with her. That's got to be tough. But, um, oh, I've got something to tell you. A little warning. I had my cell phone. I, I have a, char a charger right by where I sit at night on the couch. And I was sitting there trying to think, might have been working on the pattern pieces. And I told Mark, I smell something. I smell something burning. I smell something hot. And then I sat there. And then I went, no, I really smell it. And I leaned over the couch trying to see where it was and I said no I smell it this this is serious this is real and um because sometimes when the heater comes on you know you can kind of hear it he got up and I told him he said I don't smell it I said smell right near you know my fan he said I smell it well I came down the stairs and went all underneath that living room in the garage, looking and smelling, didn't smell anything burning. Came upstairs. He said, I found it. It was your phone charger. It is melting. So he quickly unplugged it. And sure enough, the phone charger was melting down. It had warped 
and opened up and, oh, and my phone, oh my gosh, when I smelled where you plugged it in, you could smell it. Be careful and be careful where you plug your phone in. Make sure it's on a surface that you can check it easily. Because honestly, over by where I sit, sometimes I have stuff piled up. And we had talked about going to bed earlier. Luckily, we stayed up 15 extra minutes because that thing was ready. I mean, it melted. It was, it, I don't know what it would have done. And it's scary to think about. So just be careful. You know, Mark said, did you plug it in wrong? And I said, yeah, you can't plug it in wrong. It only goes one way. So sometimes, you know, these little things kind of act up. And so we're looking into maybe getting some new refurbished phones. Um, because I doubt I can get another charger for my phone. So please be careful. Okay. Um. Oh, I'm sorry, Denise. You'll have to watch it tomorrow. My phone is an LG. LG. So we'll see. But just be careful. And if you smell something, investigate. Investigate. So I'm really happy we caught it. Mark was really happy we caught it. All right. So I will see you Sunday. And Sunday, I will show you that kit and talk. Oh, I've got the little hit that I saw to show about making applique circles. I'll tell you the one thing that I'm having confusion. It's the one thing I swore I'd never do. And I'm thinking about it. I'm getting weak. I don't know. We'll, we'll think about it. But I've got some fun things for you this Sunday. All right. Take good care. Take good care of yourselves and good luck with your daughter, Mary. Let me know. I feel so bad for you and her, but take good care of yourselves and I'll see you Sunday. All right. Oh, got to use the right remote. If you try to use the wrong remote, you can't do anything. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Bye-bye, everybody. I <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.